What about the names of Columbus's three ships? For 500 years, they have rolled off the tongue like poetry. The Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. But we've only got those partially right. Santa Maria is correct, but the Nina and the Pinta are both just nicknames concocted by their crews. The Nina was owned by somebody who was named Juan Nino. Her real name was the Santa Clara, but the sailors uh, named her after the owner and called her Nina. And then we don't know about the Pinta. We don't know what her real name was. But we do know what Pinta means in Spanish, the painted one, a colorful term for prostitute. There's a detail you don't learn in elementary school. Nine long weeks after leaving port, Columbus and all his crewmen are anxious to spot land again, and not just because their survival depends on it. The monarchs offered a prize to the first person to spot land, and it was 10,000 maravedis, which is a pretty good sum. It's about 1,200 bucks today, and more than a 15th century sailor would earn in a year. The familiar account tells us that Columbus himself spies the first glimpse of the New World. That honor goes to one of his crewmen on the Pinta, Rodrigo de Triana. But few today know his name, thanks to Columbus. Triana was up at 2 o'clock in the morning and spotted land. However, and this is sort of typical of Columbus, he didn't give him the reward. Instead, Columbus said that the night before he'd seen a light, and so that he really was the one who had spotted land. Columbus, of course, believes the fiction that they've reached Asia. The fact is that he's really 7,500 miles short of that goal. Still, the moment he rose ashore is momentous. He's the first European to set foot on North America. Mm, not quite. Columbus never set foot on the North American mainland. The closest he got to North America was some of the islands in the Caribbean and also the northern coast of Central America. 